Jim Simpson here. Welcome to my office. I'm currently parked. In the video immediately previous to this one, I made a fairly radical claim. I said that I'd been thrown out of the NRA, National Rifle Association, in 2002 for refusing to stop criticizing Republican sheriffs, in particular, uh, in California. Sheriffs that were selling gun permits under the table for cash campaign contributions and the like. Um, unfortunately, this problem still goes on. Uh, it's common as fleas across the state of California. You also see it in New York City a lot. Um, below, I'm going to give you some random, randomly selected uh, examples of proof. Some of them fairly amazing. I recommend you take out, take a close look at the Cola Francesco papers I published, which is an actual police report in which a drunk, rich crony of a sheriff in Sacramento County, California, um, bragged to officers that were arresting him that he got his gun carry rights, his, well, not the gun itself, but the gun carry rights, and an honorary deputy sheriff's badge uh, from their sheriff, their boss, in Sacramento County, and that uh, this uh, whole matter that he'd been involved with, he was drunk and threatened to move with a gun, should therefore be swept under the table. And I am told that after that report was taken, um, the entire incident was swept under the table, and the deputies that dared to arrest him, regardless of his uh, connections, say, uh, were brutally punished. I was told by another deputy that they were sentenced to Siberia. What is Siberia, you might ask? Well, there's two jails in Sacramento County. There's the main one downtown, and there's another one, I can't remember what it's called, but I believe it's Rio Rinco, or something like that. But there's a separate jail facility, I believe it's smaller, and it's way out in the country somewhere in Sacramento County, and deputies or inmates who are problem children of some kind are sent out there, and it is a nasty place for all concerned. Uh, just brutal for everybody. So, um, he spent years out there for daring to write down that some rich crony uh, got carry rights. Mm, nice. I was complaining about all this from heavy, from 2000, well, excuse me, yeah, 1997 is about when I started, and by 2002 I was rolling real heavy with it. And that's when a gentleman named Ed Worley, who was the top NRA guy in California, he was the head of the California Members Council system and a direct representative from the boys back in Fairfax, Virginia, NRA headquarters, to the California chapters, community, whatever, gun rights community, whatever you can call it. So, Worley tells me uh, we can't be hammering on these rep Republican sheriffs anymore. And the sheriff of Sacramento County, the whole succession of them were Republicans. And many of them, either currently sheriff or going to become sheriff later, were mentioned in the Cola Francesco papers. It's right there. Um, I'll show you some other documents I wrote or researched or republished during that time period. So, gets to 2002 and I'm told, you can't do this. Well, can I prove that Ed Worley told me about, you know, to lay off? Well, not directly, but I actually can prove that that debate was happening around that time. You see, shortly after I got thrown out of the NRA, I got the idea of going after the master records of all permit issuance and denial, especially denial, across the entire state. It seems that every time a permit was issued or denied, a copy of the paperwork went to the California DOJ. Now, the California Supreme Court had said in, back in 1986 that there was a possibility the whole, pro the whole permit process was going to be abused in this exact fashion by sheriffs. And so they, and police chiefs in theory, uh, so they ordered them to be made public record. But nobody thought, wait a second, instead of looking at each individual county one by one, we go after the state master records. Now, had I got a hold of those, had I been successful in getting a hold of those, which I was not, I would have been able to do real statistically valid analysis of gender bias in the process, racial bias in the process, and... I really would have kicked a beehive at that point. Really would have. Made him mad and made him have to answer some real tough questions. 
most people would have said, well, what the hell? I was not successful, and that's because the NRA and successfully helped the California DOJ rush a law, a bill, which became law, through the California legislature, um, allowing DOJ to throw away the exact records I had filed a public records request for. Well, when I found out about that, I went, okay, I've really pressed somebody's buttons now. Oh, okay. So I rushed down to the legislator when there was a hearing on that same bill, and I argued strenuously against it. The bill was AB 1044 in, 19, in 2002, and I will show a 15-minute link to the video, well, 15-minute video linked below in the comment section I write as soon as I finish recording this. Um, I'll show you how the arguments went back and forth on that bill. And one of the people arguing against me was, guess who, Ed Worley, along with California DOJ and so on and so forth. And you'll see how the arguments broke down. Now, I won that particular committee hearing right there, but they came back again later, a few days, and passed it anyway, didn't care. You know, I, I obviously had an effect, as you'll see, on one um, staunch Democrat legislator, who's was well known at the time, it's probably still well known today, you'll see. Take a look, because that's my proof that yeah, I was in that fight, and I was fighting against the NRA. Now, what does that mean in modern times? That's a long time ago. Well, back in 2000, early 2002 and prior, I was a high-level volunteer, at least within the California NRA system if you call it that there's interconnected groups and such it's fine um and i was publishing information uh important to that audience today the guy who kind of holds that same spot on a national level is named colian noir if you have not seen mr noir's videos on youtube i strongly recommend you do so um obviously although i'm saying that i had i was basically in Mr. Noir's shoes back then, obviously there's some differences. One, he's a lawyer. I'm not. Uh, I'm well versed in legal matters, and I'll probably prove that in my next video, I think, but uh, I'm not a I, I don't have a law degree. And I also have a skin condition that Mr. Noir lacks. It's called acute hyperhunkyism. Okay, I'm not black, all right? Fine. But if you look at Mr. Noir's videos today, if you study his current body of work, you will see that there's subjects that he can't touch. And I'm the guy who knows exactly why he can't touch them. Okay. He cannot touch police abuse matters, police corruption, police misconduct and the sale of gun permits. In, he's operating mostly on the East Coast. He is uh, well within reach of dealing with issues in New York City. New York City is a hotbed. The NYPD has frequently been busted selling gun permits under the table to various people. And I'll link uh, two articles on that, one from 2002 that I republished on my old website. But another from last year, well, it's now still 2018 for the next uh, few minutes anyway, um, but in 2017, the New York Times published articles showing that the NYPD was selling gun permits to a bunch of Hasidic Jews. Don't ask me. Don't know. That's just that's a little bit strange. I don't know. Maybe they're worried about Islamic terrorism. Maybe they just want to pack heat. I don't know. But, yeah, Hasidic Jews. All right. So, Mr. Noir can't mention any of this. He's not allowed to. Because the NRA took a bunch of flack in the mid-1990s when they went into the business of criticizing law enforcement. They criticized the BATF in particular. Uh, they, there was a, if you look up the, if you want to look up the controversy, uh, just look for the keywords NRA and in quotes jackbooted thugs because that's what they called the ATF for a little while mid-1990s and they had grounds boy did they ever have grounds um, VATF 
had been thoroughly subverted by the Clintons, especially Hillary Clinton and Janet Reno, into uh, a bunch of anti-gun culture stormtroopers. They were doing all kinds of crazy things, not just um, carrying out the misdeeds in Ruby Ridge, uh, which was just before the Clintons took office, by the way, and then under the Clintons it covered up the real horror of what had gone on there. They uh, carried out Waco, which was a big mess. And everybody remembers those two incidents. There were dozens of, of lesser known examples of real serious misconduct against gun owners across the dang country. Um, people being jacked up on fraudulent charges. Um, undercover agent would buy a, or buy a gun off of a gun dealer or uh, have a gun modified by a gunsmith then take it back to the labs and modify it more and then claim, oh, you sold us a short barrel shotgun. At least one case I'm aware of, um, one, one gunsmith knew this was happening so often that he inscribed his initials just inside the barrel of an 18 inch shotgun, genuinely 18 inch legal shotgun, and then had it notarized. And so when court, when the further chopped shotgun is presented as evidence. He's got a notary. He said, "Where's my signature? It's not there." That kind of, and the guy got off on that one. Um, another classic set of, of examples, and this is where it, this really came to an end. Is somebody inside BATF sneaked out some audio tape of BATF managers telling underlings to lie to courts about the accuracy of the National Fire Act, Firearms Act weapons database. NFA weapons are the good stuff. Uh, short barrel shotguns, uh, destructive devices, fully automatic weapons, and silencers are the main ones. There's a few other weird little categories of guns that are heavily, heavily restricted. And there's a database containing who's got these things and what's going on with them. And uh, their record keeping was a complete shambles. So they would find somebody who's got legal guns legally registered guns of this type, usually full auto, but not always, um, and they'd say, hey, that doesn't match our records. We're going to jack you up for a felony, 10 years minimum. And uh, it was record-keeping problems on BATS part. The records were a shambles. They knew it was a shambles. They knew the records didn't match up half the time. I don't know about, don't quote me on half the time, a fair percentage of the time. And Managers at BATF ordered underlings to lie to courts and say that that's, that was not the case when it was. And when that came out, that pretty much ended it. Late 1990s, if I recall correctly. There was an entire book written on this era as a scream of outrage protest. It was uh, not the Turner Diaries. That was a horrible, freaking racist mess. But there was a kind of a non-racist but equally angry version of the Turner Diaries. It was called Unintended Consequences. And when I say version, it was a scream of protest. And it contained some violent ideas. But it was not based on race. It was based on actual misconduct by BATF and it documents a whole bunch of real world examples. Basically, it, the, the, the novel Unintended Consequences is about the real world real-world events in gun control and American society as they affect a fictional family and then what effects that causes. That, that's what unintended consequences is. But it documents a whole bunch of real-world examples of problems like I'm talking about. So NRA jumps on that same bandwagon about 1995. Unintended consequences comes out in 1996. Um, the Clintons are in full rampage mode against gun owners the same period. And when the NRA said jackbooted thugs, you know, these guys, ATF's completely out of control, they suffered consequences for that stance. Um, George uh, Bush the first, the, the, the first President Bush, turned in his NRA life membership card. Oh, you, you evil, but you know, federal agents are honorable people. No, they aren't, but okay. Um, but they got, a, they ran into another problem. And this is a bad one. 
the NRA consistently has allies within law enforcement act as their spokespeople. Okay, um, most of them are sheriffs, and unfortunately, most of these sheriffs that outwardly and publicly support the NRA do so because they're trying to distract people on their right-wing voter base from the fact that those same sheriffs are assholes, okay? Um, people who, sheriffs who kill a whole bunch of people in their jails, like Joe Arpaio, like um, uh, David Clark, infamous lunatic who ran the sheriff's office in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin for a while. Remember him? Yeah, prominent NRA spokesman. You also saw him on Fox News, big time Trump backer. Um, another one was Sheriff uh, what's his name? in Orange County, California, Mike Corona. Oh, Lord, yes. Mike Corona, another of these lunatics. In 2000, he helped with an entire half-hour infomercial that NRA got funding for somehow, and they put on daytime TV all up and down the state of California uh, before the 2000 general election. And Corona... In 2002, at the same time I was talking to Ed Worley about uh, what I should or should not be publishing or doing, uh, I told Ed Worley, hey, by the way, Mike Corona, your buddy, he's dirty. I'm hearing from people inside his department that he's dirty. He's selling permits under the table. He's giving out a lot of permits. That's good, but not 100%, you know, non-corrupt basis. Some people are having to pay for him under the table. I'm, no, no, Mike Corona's a good guy. He's uh, uh, one of our greatest supporters. Yeah, until federal agents uh, closed in on his ass, federal prosecutors busted him, and I want to say 2010, they finally got to him. Maybe I may be off a year. But look it up. Sheriff Mike Corona busted feds. Yeah, he went. To, he went to federal prison. The first set of charge sheets written by a federal attorney included the actual cost he was selling gun carry permits for under the table, thousand bucks each. That charge of selling gun permits got dropped as part of the plea bargaining process and it went away. But it was in the original charge sheets, just like I told Ed Worley, he's dirty, watch out, you're going to get burned by this guy. So, what's going on here? Well, look, give you an example. Diane Feinstein, on the left, darling of the left, so to speak, her, her her star is finally beginning to fade because people on the left have realized that she is an absolute warmongering lunatic. She's uh, she is right wing in so many different ways; it's not even funny. But she tried to maintain for so many years her left wing credentials by focusing on two issues to make her look touchy feely lefty. One of them was gun control, the other, of course, being, um, well, pro-choice, let's say. Uh, pro, I, I don't want to say pro-abortion, but pro-abortion legalization, let's say. So she used those two issues to maintain some credibility with the left, but her main interest was just pure profit and greed and horse crap. She, she just gassed me. What the people in the NRA didn't realize, and what a lot of gun rights supporters have not realized, is that the same dynamic happens on the right. You get people like you know, Joe Arpaio, great, great example, a uh, complete and utter nutcase, okay, M numerous deaths in jails, huge numbers of civil rights abuses and lawsuits lost, where do you even start? There's a, there's a, Arizona Supreme Court case ruling uh, that I mentioned in a previous video just recently it says um, you can get a hold of records that have not been created yet but are going to be released going to be created at a future date and that's because of horse crap that Joe Arpaio pulled um, nasty nasty guy but he tried to maintain his credibility by saying oh I'm among other things true blue NRA the NRA has another problem. Well, let me just to conclude that one thought. The NRA has apparently figured out, and there could be some truth to it, that if they criticize any law enforcement agency anywhere in the country, such as, for example, NYPD for chronic under the table sales of gun carry permits, chronic, if they criticize them for that, 
they will get condemned by law enforcement all over the country because cops are at a point where if you criticize a cop, you are bad. Um, there's that whole group that, that I mentioned before, the, the cop watchers and First Amendment audit crowd, which there's some overlap between the two. There's slight differences. Don't worry about it. Those guys, they point a camera at a cop um, on the off chance they might catch him doing misconduct or they might do misconduct because you pointed a camera at him. Um, those guys are roundly condemned by all manner of law enforcement officers um, and agencies all up and down the country because uh, they're critical of law enforcement. If you're critical of law enforcement, you're an enemy of law enforcement. And the NRA doesn't want to be an enemy of law enforcement. Yeah, well, guess what? It's, at some point, it gets bad enough where you got to call a problem a problem. Now they've got one more problem. The NYPD, when they sold gun permits uh, all those years, they often sold them to celebrities. Lists have been published of people like Howard Stern getting a permit. The first one of the times they got busted for selling permits um, was a bunch of payoffs made by the band Aerosmith. Well, one of the people that almost certainly bought their way into a permit was a certain lunatic, slightly orange-tinted real estate developer in New York City. Kind of a famous guy. And I've heard he's got a new job and new digs at a place called 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Yeah, I'm talking Trump. He's got an NYPD carry permit, and he got it at a time when NYPD corruption was at its height. Tell you who else bought his way into a permit in Michigan. Uh, major NRA uh, spokesperson, supporter, and member of the NRA board of directors, Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent got his way into a honorary sheriff's reserve program in Michigan back before the year 2000, when um, issuance of a permit in that state was. Um, at the complete discretion of law enforcement. Actually, what they had is a, like a three-person three panel, one from the sheriff's office, one from the DA, and one from somewhere else, but didn't matter, because the guy from the sheriff and the guy from the DA always agreed with each other, and you either convinced those two or you didn't, you got a permit or you didn't. In 2000, they rationalized the entire, um, and by that I mean made really rational, the entire Michigan permit process so that if you pass the background check, take the training, you'll get a permit. That's how it is now. That's good. So these um, honorary sheriff's deputies clubs, which you see in all kinds of places, you see them in California a lot. You, there's evidence they used to happen in Ohio, in Florida, back before they changed their gun permit laws, their, their carry permit access laws. These clubs of honorary sheriff's deputies, oh, Cole Francisco, of course, is the case. Same thing. Um, Ted Nugent was involved in that up to his eyeballs. Now, the weird thing is, even in a state like Michigan, which um, brought their laws into reasonable level of constitutionality in 2000, these permit clubs, the honorary sheriff's deputies clubs, didn't entirely go away. And then in 2000, they made a, uh, sorry, 2004, they made a comeback. What happened in 2004? There was a federal law called LEOSA, L-E-O-S-A, I don't know. Law Enforcement Officers Safety Addendum, I, I don't remember the exact, I'll publish a link to it down below, okay? LEOSA says that if you are a cop anywhere in the country, you can carry off-duty or even retired um, in every U.S. state, plus D.C., plus Guam, Virgin Islands, whatever, Puerto Rico, I guess. Um, so it was a, it was a cross-border carry permit recognition system mandated at the federal level for cops. Well, cops including honorary deputy sheriffs, apparently, and re the reserve deputy sheriffs, is what they started to call them. Um, One such individual in Oklahoma City, uh, sorry, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, actually 
managed to kill somebody not long ago, within the last couple of years. These honorary and reserve deputy programs uh, came to Big Head in Oakley, Michigan. There's a funny one. Oakley tried to maintain the secrecy of their uh, reserve deputy program, executive reserve deputy program list, um, because terrorists might find out about them. So they kept the list completely secret. Well, we're not supposed to have secret police. And somebody noticed that. And finally, they got the list. Guess who was on it? Among others, Kid Rock. Hmm. Buddy of the NRA. Known close associate to one Ted Nugent. So, there is corruption and horse crap going on in the handling of gun carry permits in the states where um, it's not rational. New York, Massachusetts, California, Maryland, New Jersey, places like that. You've got problems there. You also have problems elsewhere, even in states where the permit laws are rational for regular folks, but now you've got honorary deputy sheriffs getting 50 state carry rights that people like me don't have. I don't. I can't carry if I go anywhere near New York City or New Jersey or et cetera, et cetera. And I get seriously popped if I were to have a gun in the truck. Not a good idea. And I'll make a whole video on the whole guns in truck issue next. That'll be the next video. It's a mess. But it's way past time for the NRA to say no to corruption, to say no to Russian money. Let's get let's start with that, okay? No, to, no, no Putin's peasants need to go away from American politics. Don't think so. NRA has to come out and take a stand against that, take a stand against corruption, take a stand against the sale of honorary reserve deputy status that sort of thing, against the sale of regular carry permits in New York City and across California and places like that. Then you take a stand. Because you're either for corruption or you tolerate it. If you tolerate it, well, Hillary Clinton today is not president, much to her dismay, because she tolerated corruption. She was clearly, clearly involved in a whole bunch of corruption. Just those massive speaking fees paid by people like Goldman Sachs had everybody ready to puke. Okay, so the DNC's got to get right with the whole concept of corruption. It either democracies died because of corruption. Corruption is a bad thing. But right now, I went to I went to a federal judge, William Olson, in California in the year 2000. I sued because the permit process was unfair and irrational and corrupt and I couldn't get a permit because I hadn't paid the right bribes. So I went to a federal court. A federal judge named William Alsop said, well, because uh, the discrimination, there's discrimination going on here, but because it's not along the basis of race, religion, national origin, the protected classes, it's only along the basis of who's got money and who doesn't. And who's got money versus who doesn't is not a protected class like race, religion, national origin are. Um, then the, we examine what the government does on a rational basis level. We say, is there any kind of possible rational basis for what the government, any kind of excuse for what the government's doing? If there is, they win. You get thrown out of court. That's what happened to me. I got thrown out of court on summary judgment in 2000. Fought as hard as I could. Okay? Tried real hard to get a black Copeland, to be honest. I, I got to the point where I was prowling around shooting ranges looking for black shooters, trying to find somebody with dark skin who was ready to complain about uh, the permit process in Contra Costa County, California in particular. And I couldn't find one. Could not find one willing to stand up. Tried for like a year. So, that's part of my story. And unfortunately, it's part of Colin, Colin Noir's story. There's things he can't say. Uh, I'll tell you what else he can't say. He can't say that if you end the war on drugs, so much violence in America will go away that we won't even be talking about gun control anymore. But he can't say that because too many absolutely bonkers Republicans like Jeff Sessions are absolutely for the war on drugs. Ah, oh, war on drugs, good thing. Well, no, it's not. But the NRA is now so deeply in bed with the 
Republicans that can't say anything they don't like. That's not good. Checking out.